I got a pretty exciting surprise in the mail today. Uh, this is actually addressed to three of us, but it has to do with SparkFun's new release and a blog post that Alistair published about it back in June. I'm really excited because I think we finally have it here in our hands. We will get to the details in just a second, but first let's get this out of its package. So I already cut the tape on this and I found that there was a, oh, well, first we should look at the packaging because this is great. Content's fragile, open with care, please recycle, or build a fort. Start something. Spark fun. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and then you've got some reference for where to find information of whatever you got in the box. And we have this wonderful card to me as well as Adam and Artie, uh, which honestly I feel like Alistair should get more credit for this because I barely have done anything yet. But um, they said thank you so much for your support and insights during the initial Artemis launch and enclosed please find the engineering version of the Artemis module plus the three carry boards we released. Enjoy! We will send you the certified version as soon as we have it. Which is also exciting. You're gonna find out the difference between the engineering version and the certified version in just a moment. But first, let's open up this paper here. Ooh, yeah! Oh, they're so small! Okay. Very exciting. Okay, one thing actually that I noticed is that now they have a glossy box. What is this? This is not the SparkFun box, I remember. It's got some cool stuff on it, though. I'll grant them that. All right. So first up, this tiny little device here is the Artemis module itself. Look at how small. Look, look how small. It's got an antenna on it for a Bluetooth 5. And it can be mounted directly to other PCBs so that you can create your own board with it. And there's a ton of reference materials for that as well. So let's take a look at the blog post. First up, the module itself measures just 10.5 by 15.5 millimeters. This is the blog post by Alistair from June. And um, yeah, the goal of this board is to enable anyone to integrate low power machine learning into their designs and projects without being locked into a specific tool chain. The Artemis module is the first project product to bridge the gap between hobbyists and consumer products, providing a single module from prototype to production. And that's what these other boards here are enabling. This is where the engineering versus production versions come in. So this is not a certified version. You don't have the SVC approval, you don't have the CE mark, but there is another one coming soon. Uh, here's another size reference. The whole thing is built around the Apollo 3 processor, which was used previously in the SparkFun Edge from March, which as you can see was rather larger. And this one is much, much smaller. Um, it did have a camera attachment. This one does not have that, and that one also had what looks like two MEMS microphones on it. Basically what they've done is shrunk the entire thing by moving some of these functions onto the carrier boards that they also released at the same time. So, for example, the MEMS microphone, the quick breakout. I don't think there's a camera break on, on any of these actually, but uh, a lot of the things that made the previous board kind of nice have been made optional by putting them on the carrier boards instead. So then you can just choose what you want to put on your own board uh, and drop this little module on top and it can be as tiny as you want. So you've got an ARM Cortex-M4F running at 48 megahertz up to 48 GPIO pins, which will come up again later, a megabyte of flash memory, 384 kilobytes of RAM, and Bluetooth 5, which means that you can run mesh networks. It consumes an incredibly small amount of power, so 0.6 milliamps running in 96 megahertz burst mode, uh, down to 48 megahertz for general activity, and then one microamp in deep sleep mode. What? That's if you have Bluetooth turned off. This one you power directly from another board, but some of these things you can power from USB-C or from LiPo batteries or from a barrel jack. They do have tools that you can use in order to program it with Arduino. So there's the GitHub repo, Arduino underscore Apollo 3, that will give you the core for it. But then also there's a whole guide for Artemis development with Arduino. Not only that, there's a hardware guide for designing your own hardware with the Artemis, as well as an entire open source repo, including everything you would need to build one of these from scratch, if you wanted to do that. Which, why? <laughs> it's so cheap. Uh, for reference, this module is $9. It would cost you so much more to try and roll this by yourself. 
and it would be a huge pain in the butt. Now, like with a lot of machine learning on the edge devices, you train your machine learning model on a bigger, more powerful computer, and then you download the model onto a smaller device and do inferencing, which is where you're actually using the model to recognize faces or identify objects or figure out what percentage death metal band versus My Little Pony it is. I'm not sure I totally agree with these results. But in general, their goal is to democratize machine learning so that anyone can work on it. I'm going to get into some other options that you have in this realm as well a little bit later on. So on to the other development boards that we have in here. We have an Arduino alike. This one it is called the Blackboard. And the name not only suggests learning and also is extremely literal. <laughs> Pretty. I'm not going to take the little module out of its bag because look at it. It's tiny. But yeah, you've got the module over there and you've got your standard Arduino Uno type stuff. You do have a USB-C port over here and then you have your barrel jack for power, your reset button as per usual, your pin 13 LED and receive and transmit indicator lights. This is compared to the red board, which they released a while ago, well, years and years ago at this point, which had a little bit different arrangement. So we've gone from learn, share, hack to start something. There's info about this, of course, in Alistair's blog post. Starting point for a product. Once you get this set up with your Arduino core, you're probably going to see it as just a regular Arduino, except that it also has Bluetooth LE and a Mega Flash. Also, a couple of other things that aren't immediately apparent. You've got a little MEMS microphone and a quick connector. And the MEMS microphone allows you to do onboard machine learning voice recognition for commands and stuff if you wanted to make a little smart assistant that was always on, as Alistair points out. Then we have the Nano module. I'm a huge fan of the tiny boards, especially when they have built-in LiPo connectors, especially, especially when they have an actual charging circuit. You got your little reset button. It's pretty satisfying. Uh, your Artemis module, uh, pretty hefty helping of pins. Plus, it's nicely set up so that you can easily wire multiple things to it, and it's breadboard compatible. Also, it's half height. So it's very compact. You've still got the quick connector and you've even still got the MEMS mic on here, which is mounted on the bottom and it's got a little hole through it and it's matte black and gold and white, which is my favorite color combo. You can't mount this on top of another board, obviously, but you can stick it in a breadboard. I guess the blackboard also has the mic mounted with the hole underneath. Typically I've seen them with the hole on top, but that's interesting, huh? And then finally, we have the ATP, which is the big sibling. It looks like a mega. It's not a mega. It's not pin compatible, but it ATP stands for all the pins. You've got your PWM pins marked with your little tildes, which always makes me happy. 3.3 volts maximum. So much documentation on the board itself, which I love to see as well. This one also has your little mic. Where is it here? So nicely labeled. Glorious. And again, you have USB-C and a barrel jack. Obviously the Nano one didn't have the barrel jack, it had a LiPo connector. But then, yeah, all of these sort of are pretty compatible. They also have spots to mount coin cell batteries on these two big guys, which is pretty sweet as well. So even though it's a giant board like this, it's still powered by this teensy weensy module and you can still run it off of a coin cell. Isn't that cool? So this breaks out, you know, all 48 of those pins that you have available on the Artemis module. And I probably wouldn't have noticed this, but all of these pins are kind of jumbled up together. And that is apparently because they are arranged in the same way that they are on the chip itself. And so if you look, these are all just kind of parallel lines. Again, you've got your, your LED, although it's on pin five this time. And then you've got your transmit and receive indicator lights. You've got your power on indicator. So yeah, as he points out, this is the one you would be able to really test out what your actual product might use because you have everything broken out on here. He closes with some pricing information and a note that these will probably turn red once they're actually in the production certified versions, but I'm really pleased to have these versions. I'm about to go on a big trip and I want to bring these around and show them off to people and see what people want to build with them. Now, before we go, I wanted to point out a couple of other options that you have if you want to run machine learning on microcontrollers. And one of those is Microtensor. So we talked a while ago with Neil Tan, who told us all about uh, Microtensor, which is his project for using TensorFlow with microcontrollers. And you can find that on github.com slash utensor. They call it an extremely lightweight machine learning inference framework built on embed and TensorFlow for ARM devices. 
Uh, it consists of a runtime library and an off to offline tool, the total size of graph definition and algorithm implementation of a three-layer MLP produced by Microtensor is less than 32 kilobytes in the resulting binary, excluding the weights. It can fit on a really tiny board, tiny in memory. And then you've also got TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers, which you can find out about on tensorflow.org. They've got a whole guide about it getting started with microcontrollers, why microcontrollers are important, and the developer workflow and all kinds of stuff like that, as well as the supported platform. So no matter what you're working on now, you probably have something available to run machine learning on a microcontroller that you have, whether it's TensorFlow Lite, MicroTensor, or now the uh, Artemis Core. And it's only $9. It's on back order right now, but you can sign up to subscribe for notifications when it becomes available, including the certified version. So stay tuned, and I can't wait to see what people start building with this. Hack on.